Uh, can you tell us more about the flattened marriage? It's full of regrets and comes rested on a bed of half-boiled excuses and unfinished to-do lists. Oh, that sounds nice. It's our anniversary. Congratulations! How many years? No idea. We can't remember. How about dessert on the house? Tonight's selection is a low-motivation pie. Well, that's our favorite. Let me get that order going for you. To years of neglect. In our I Choose message series, it's been a great series so far. And the key thought for us is that we, we have to keep in mind that we are the sum total of the decisions and the choices we make. We are the sum total of the choices we make. So last week we talked about choosing surrender over control. And uh, honestly, surrender over control was a big challenge for me. As we really walked through that choosing surrender over control, I realized that, you know, for me it's not easy to let go. I want to be in control. Anybody else? You can raise your hand. We're all in a safe place. Yeah. Okay, there's a few of us. Now, if you were tempted, like I said last week, to lift the person's hand next to you, yeah, you probably struggle with that, right? You're like, lift your hand too. You're controlling. So the point is, though, is that it, it's very difficult to surrender, but there's peace in surrender. When we come to a place of surrender, we really discover the peace of God that transcends all understanding. And so if you miss that message, you can always go and jump on our app. You can jump online and catch up on that. Now next week, we're going to be wrapping up the series. We're going to be talking about choosing important over urgent. Very, very key thought for us to talk about. And so we'll be just wrapping up the series with that next week. But today, uh, we want to talk about choosing discipline over regret. Ah, regret. Ah, like have you ever regretted something in your life? Hmm, I would think so. And the, the thing is, is that as we near the end of our lives, do we want to have a list of regrets or a list of accomplishments? Do we want to have a list of regrets or a list, list of things we look back on and say, I'm grateful for that, I'm grateful for, for what I experienced there. Now let me just say, it, here at Junction Community Church, we want you to be encouraged every time that you come to Sunday morning. We want you to walk out of this place. It's our goal. It's our hope. It's our desire that when you walk out of this place, you're encouraged to live out your faith in a real and practical way. We hope that when you walk out of this place that you've been inspired, you've been encouraged, and most of the times we want to keep it as positive as possible. But today, I have a very sobering fact for you, okay? See, it doesn't start out very encouraging, but I hope by the end of the service we'll all be encouraged. And so I apologize in advance, but here it is. Um, in this life, you will experience pain. Ah. In this life, you will experience pain. You will go through difficulty, you will go through hardship, you will experience pain. In fact, Jesus himself said in Matthew 16, he said, in this life, you will face trouble. You will face trouble. Now I'm like, okay, you know that... We don't want to hear about that, right? We want to hear about climbing the mountaintop. We want to hear about all these good things. But the reality is, is that in life, we are going to experience pain. Jesus himself talked about it. But some of the pain that we experience in life, we, have a, we don't have any choice over, okay? Just follow this thought, for me, for, this thought process with me for a minute. We have no choice over many of the difficult and painful situations we experience. Let me give you some examples. When it comes to betrayal, we have no control over that. We have no choice in whether we're going to experience that pain or not. It's, the, it, it, it's painful when we're betrayed. It's painful when we're rejected, but we have no choice in that pain. We only experience it. When an accident of any kind happens, whether it be minor, you know, don't cry over spilled milk. Yeah, y'all got it. You know, we, accidents happen, you know, um, and, and so things happen in life. And, and when those type of accidents, sometimes there's minor like that, and sometimes there's some major accidents that that when we look back, we, we experience pain as a result. There's pain that we experience. And really, we have no choice for that pain. 
You know, it could be a, a layoff. You know, the company is downsizing. And, and I know many of you that have faced that and, and, and you've faced this downsizing of sorts. And, and, and it's painful because all of a sudden it changes your, your uh, level of, of, of living. It changes the lifestyle you live. It changes you being, whether you're able to pay your bills or so on and so forth. And the point is, is that it's painful, but it's out of your control. It's not by your choice. And so we experience this type of pain because of life, because of the circumstances of life, but we have no choice over it. However, there are other times we have a choice between types of pain, okay? And and let me just give you a few examples. First of all, we have the, we can experience the pain of obeying our parents now or the pain of consequences later. You see that? There we have choice. Again, there's many things that we can't choose in life when it comes to pain. It just comes our way. We experience it. We have to choose how to navigate that pain, but ultimately the pain comes our way. But there are other times that we can clearly decide. We can make a choice. We can decide, do I experience the pain of obeying my parents now or the pain of the consequences later? And how many of you look back and say, my mom was right. My dad was right. My grandparents were right. My Theo was right. My Thea was right. She knew exactly what I needed in my life, but I didn't want to listen. And so let me give you another one, the pain of studying now. You can study now (laughs) or you can retake the class later. It's your choice. But it's a lot easier when you study now because the pain of studying now is a lot easier than the pain of taking the class over. And uh, just a side note for that, you know, sometimes we get into this mode that we think people are smarter than us. They're not smarter than you. They just work harder than you. And that's usually the case. It's just they, they work, they apply themselves a little bit harder to whatever they're studying. And so the pain of studying now or the pain of retaking the class later. All right, here's another one. The pain of saying no to temptations now or the pain of trying to beat addiction later. Ah, ah, I don't talk about my junk, you know, it's just. The pain of saying no to temptation now or the pain of trying to beat addiction later. Another one, I'll give you one more. The pain of living within your means. Ah, but I just, nobody wants to live within your means, right? That's why we have credit cards. The pain of living within your means or the pain of climbing out of debt later. Ah, Ah, come on, man. Pain, we don't want to experience pain. And so what we're talking about today is choosing the pain of discipline over the pain of regret. That's what we're talking about today. It's a choice we face every day in life. Every day we wake up, we have the opportunity to choose. And so I want to dig into God's Word for just a few moments here and discover how to choose discipline over regret. Before, but before we do, I want to establish a working definition for us. And so here's the definition. Discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want most. It's your choice. We can choose. All of us have the opportunity to choose every day of our lives. Or we're going to choose the, dis- it's a, the discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want most. But oftentimes when we choose what we want now over what we want most, we miss out on what we want most, right? We miss out. We miss the opportunity. And so we never truly experience what we want most in life because we're so infatuated with what we want now, you know. Um, and, I, and I have a whole list of what this, how this can play out, and I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. But I want us to just get some biblical insight for a second because if anybody should have got this right, if anybody should have got this right, it was the Apostle Paul. Because the Apostle Paul, after all, he was one that experienced the risen Christ. He, he, he experienced Jesus after Jesus had resurrected. And he came to him on the road to Damascus. And he had a radical transformation in the book of Acts chapter 9. And, and God does this incredible work in his life. And, and after he was converted and after he was changed and, and he had this calling on his life. And he went on to, to, to lead the early church and and, and, and man, he's that super apostle, you know, and not only did he lead the early church, but the New Testament that you and I have today, he, re- he wrote a third of the New Testament. And so he, he came to this place in his life where, where, I don't know about you, but if I look to anybody in, in my journey of faith, I think, man, Paul must have had it all figured out, right? 
He must have had it all together. I mean, he, he met the risen Christ. He experienced him in a supernatural way. He wrote a third of the New Testament. He, 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 uh, not only that, but he was a leader of the early church. He was one of the great apostles. Man, Paul must have had it all figured out, right? Hmm, maybe not. Let's do some reading. Romans chapter 7, starting in verse 15. This is Paul writing. He says, I don't really understand myself. <laughs> For I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. You know what this looks like for us today? It's like, I know I shouldn't eat that cupcake, but Lord, there's 12 of them. I'll just eat nine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, no, nah, just give me one of them. You know, I'm just going to, you know, I don't really understand myself. For I, I want to do what is right. Lord, I want to work out so bad, but man, it's just so comfortable to sleep in, you know, Especially now, like, it's cold outside already, and, oh, it's warm in here, you know? I, I'm not getting out of bed, you know? So I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. And I know that nothing, moving to verse 18, I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. You ever felt like that? Like, I want to do what's right. I want to honor God. I want to live for God. I want to honor my life. I want to honor my uh, financial health, my physical health. I want to honor my emotional health. I want to do this. I want to. I really do. And how many of you have ever told yourself, leading into a situation, don't do that? Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't look that way. Don't talk that way. Don't, 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 don't. And what do you do? You do what you don't want to do, right? And you're so frustrated with yourself can't. It says, I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do anyway. What, I, if anything, this makes me feel good. I don't know about you, but I'm like, okay, if the Apostle Paul, the guy who should have had it all figured out, messed up on occasion and felt like this on the inside, thank God I'm not the only one. Anybody else? And yeah, it's like, thank God. It's not just me. Thank God. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. Goes on, verse 24, he says, oh, what a miserable person I am. You ever beat yourself up? Anybody in this place? Man, I'm good at that. My, oh, my wife knows all too well. She gets to see the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? You know, she, the ugly. The ugly's real ugly when it's ugly, but you know, y'all don't get to see that side. But I beat myself up because I, I want to live this disciplined life. I want to honor God. I want, but I make mistakes. You know, I'm human. Just wanted to let you know, before I became a pastor, I was a man, you know. And, uh, yeah, you're like, wait, what? Yeah. You know, I'm still human. I struggle. I face things, and I, I beat myself up about it. Oh, what a miserable person I am. That's what Paul's doing. And it says, who will free me from this life that, I, that is dominated by sin and death? He's He's frustrated with himself. He's frustrated with the situation. And he comes to this place saying, who am I? Or, or what a miserable person I am. And then he asks, who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? And we read on. Thank God. Woo. Oh, it just changes. Here he is saying, I want to do it. I, I want to do this, but I don't do it. I don't want to do what I don't want to do, but I end up doing it anyway. And it's like this fight, this argument that's going on within his soul, within his heart. And he's saying, I'm a miserable person. Who can save me from this? And he says, verse 25, thank God. It changes. He realizes that in this moment, he must thank God. Why? Because the answer is in who? The answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. I can't do it. You can't do it. But by the help of Almighty God, we can live a life that honors Him. We can live a life that pleases Him. We can live a life of excellence. And when we make a mistake, guess what? He is big enough to embrace us in our mistakes and say, I'm going to carry you. I'm going to pick you up out of the dirt, out of the mire, out of the mud, and I'm going to carry you forward. Thank God He is big enough. Amen. The answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. And so who can deliver us but Jesus? 
And so with, with Christ's help, we can change. Again, we're talking about choosing discipline over regret. And there are so many times that we want to be disciplined. We want to be a follower of Christ. We want to follow His pattern, His plan for our lives, but we struggle. And so, on our own, the reality is that we're, we're prone to make wrong choices. But with Christ, we can choose discipline over we regret. We can choose what we want most over what we want now. What we want now. We can choose what we want most what we, over what we want now. Now, Paul, he has a progression of thoughts. And so uh, we see this where he struggles and he's saying, look, the clear answer, first of all, is in Jesus Christ alone. And let me just clearly say that, like we can never be good enough. Let that sink in for, to your mind. We could never be good enough. We can never earn our salvation. And I know it's not a popular thought, and some people think that when you say that, you're minimizing like the fact that we should live holy lives. I'm not minimizing that at all. I'm just saying that I, Paul, Dean Espinoza, cannot save myself. It's only Christ that can save me. It's only his work on the cross and his resurrection that can save me. That's the only thing that can do it. And the reality is, as much as I'd like to be perfect, I'm not. And as much as almost 20 years later that I've been serving Christ, I wish I was perfect, but guess what? I'm still a work in progress, but thank God that he saves us. Thank God that he's able. And so Paul talks about this, and as he progresses on about choosing discipline over regret, we come to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. You look at two verses to start out, and it says this. It says, do you not realize in a race everyone runs? But only one person gets the prize. So run to win. Everybody say that. Run to win. Run to win. I don't know about you, but I don't want to just get through life. I want to run to win. I want to win. Tired of getting dirt kicked in my face. Not to a Libre fan, do you, you're, yeah. I want to win. So run to win. Do you not realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are, there's that word again, disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for what? An eternal prize. You see, we're able to run to win. We're able to press forward because we know that, that, that there's a prize ahead of us. There's something to obtain. And it's not just a medal. It's not just a, a, a 50-cent headband. You know what I'm saying? Like, you mean you paid all that money and you ran 10, 10 miles to, to get that? Like, woohoo! That's awesome. There we go. You know, you did all that now, but you know, here's the thing, anybody competitive, like you just got a competitive edge, you cannot lose when it comes to like Monopoly or like, you know, you're like, you cheat, you know, you steal money, you're like, you're like, what, what's it, Park Place or what, what's the good one? I don't remember, it's been so long. Board, boardwalk, I'll see y'all know. You like, you got a second like thing of Boardwalk, you know, you, you, you like went and got another Monopoly, you stole the Boardwalk and all of a sudden you just. You're like, how'd you get that? You know, I'm just good at this game. You know, you're competitive and you're a liar too, but thank God you're in church. Uh, but here's the point, competitive. Personally, I'm competitive. I want to win, you know. And, and recently, I, I've, uh, I, you know, you, you don't, please don't be offended. I don't know how to do this without offending you, but I broke this finger, this, this one, okay. Um, I broke it. And, and it's ugly. Like, if you come and see it close up in person, it's ugly. It, it looks broken, you know. And I broke it, like, way back in probably May. And I was like, it'll get better. It'll get better. And the doctors, all they do is put a splint and all that. Whatever. I ain't going to the doctor. You know, I've already broke fingers. I know how to heal this myself, you know. So, you know, here I am, May, let's see, June, July, August. Yeah, four months later, and guess what? It hurts still. And so the other day, in fact, last night, I got to the gym and I was like, you know what, I was going to go roll for a little while, do some rounds, so I wrapped it up, you know, I got it all put together and I'm like, I'll be all right, I'll be good, I'll just take it easy, I'll just go light, you know, light, going easy, you know, before you know it, and I'm like, hey, you know what, my finger feels all right, I woke up this morning and I'm like, oh, competitive nature it'll push you right 
And so, as Paul's talking here, he says, don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. Now, as Paul's speaking to the Corinthians, they would be familiar with this language because in Corinth, there, was a, there were games that, that uh, athletes set out to be a part of. They were called the Isthmian Games, and it was a big race. And so athletes went into strict training. In fact, it's, it's said that they, they spent about 10 months training for this race. And during that time, they would refrain from alcohol, from junk food, from wine, from all of those things. They would refrain in such a way that they would discipline themselves with what they put in their bodies. They would discipline themselves to how they trained. They would expose themselves to extreme heat and cold. And, and, and they, would, they would prepare themselves to run this race. They would prepare to run this race. Now, I'll tell you what, they did it to... They, they did it again, he says, they do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for eternal prize. But he was making the reference here. So I want to share a little bit about my tough motor, mutter experience. I, I told you I would, okay? So here it is, all right? Let me share some pictures here. So here I am. Uh, we, this is, I'm just going to share probably, I think there's two obstacles in here that I'll share. Um, here I am. Uh, I don't know if you can kind of tell, but that's me right here. That's my cousin right here. And I'll be honest, this is a swing. It's called... Uh, King of the Swingers, and you, you jump to it, you got to swing, and then there's a bell. I don't know if you can see, but there's a bell hanging out right here. And so what you have to do is you have to jump onto this thing, you have to swing, release, and bam, hit the bell. And in my mind, I'm like, how do I get out of this? <laughs> Twelve feet above the water, the water looks pretty muddy, I'm sure it's really warm. We're at 8,000 feet above sea level, and Last night it got down to a chilling 40 or so. I don't know. You know, I'm sure that water is real warm right now. I mean, it's had about an hour of sunlight, you know. And uh, so here we are. I'm thinking to myself, how do I get out of this? I'll be honest. I struggled right here. I, I, in my mind, I'm like, how do I get out of this? And there's like, in fact, I'll be honest. You know, the conversation in my head was like, you sissy, get on that thing and jump. You know, and I, I talked to myself a little bit. Like I said, I like to beat myself up sometimes. But I, 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 you know, I really had to get out of my comfort zone right here, all right? So here I am. I get ready for the jump, and I jump, and I make it, and uh, I'm about, I, in my mind, I'm going to hit that bell, you know? But I kind of overjumped, and then here I am. Isaac, you see how close he is? Close, but close is, is not close enough. He didn't get it. Neither did I. Out of eight of us, only one of us actually hit the bell, and uh so there I am, I drop in the water, go, it's, a, it's a 12 foot pond by, that, by the way, and, and I get to the bottom, I'm under there, and, I, and I'm thinking between like I'm about to drown, and it's so cold that I can't move. Like, you know, I come out of the water, there I am out of the water, and I'm, I'm squeezing, the drop. I'm freezing is what's happening right here. I'm so cold, but I'm like, I did it. There's the rest of my cousins, we're all watching the rest go through. Um, so that was pretty intense. I came out of that water. It took a long time to dry up. And, uh, uh, but here I am in another obstacle. Uh, this one was, I mean, it was so fun, you know, cold, muddy water that you jump into. And I don't know if you've ever had cold feet and then like done that. Oh, pain like shoots through your feet. And every time I'm like trying to like ease in, you know, because I don't want to land on my feet. I'm like trying to slide in. Nice and easy, and every time it's like needles sticking through your feet, you know, every time. And uh, every pool, because it was, a multi, like, there's not a picture, but there were at least five of these different dips. And so every time it got deeper and deeper and deeper, and uh, yeah, more painful and painful. So uh, here's me in the middle, here's me on top. It's like, all right, I got this. I'm feeling good. Okay. Moving on. Now this one right here, this one's called cage crawl. Now I'll be honest. I'm thinking no more water. I don't want to get back in the water, but unfortunately there's water. So then what I say to myself is in this particular one, I'm going to go as fast as I can because I just want to get to the other side. You know, that's the goal. Just get to the other side. So I start out and I start moving. And as I'm going, I'm going really fast. And the next slide, you'll see that uh, there's panic that begins to happen. 
Because as you're crawling upside down, and you got water and a cage in front of your face, you st- I don't care how mentally strong you are, you start to freak out. In fact, I started drinking water. It was going in my nose. I'm like, and all I'm thinking is, how fast can I get through this? And I realized that the faster I went, the more water went on my face. So then I kind of, I, I have a moment, I have a moment, and I realize, slow down. <sighs> Breathe. You got this. So I stop, I float a little bit, and I start going slower. This is the obstacle that when I did it, I was like, I got this. It ain't nothing. You know, I got this. Scared me. I thought I was going to die. I almost quit. There, I'll, I'll be honest. There was a moment because, you know, there's people there to help, and they'll lift the fence up, and then you get out. And I'm like, you sissy, grit down, hold your breath, and calm down. And I'm just like, in that moment, I was like, dude, do not give up. What did you, you come here for? You know, all that's happening as I'm, you know, like, what did you come here for? Are you going to, like, because I saw some people get out, and I'm like, jump, you know. So I slow down, and I think that says it all. Thank God. I made it. I'm still alive. So. Uh, moving on, I got a couple more here. Nine out of ten doctors don't recommend electroshock therapy. Now, I don't have any cool pictures, and all I would say to this one is, thank God. Because twice I got, three times actually, I got hit by electricity. The first one caught my leg, and I, I did one of these. Boom! Thank God my upper body was still intact, but my lower body fell over, you know? So I caught myself. In fact, I cut my hand. I still got a crazy scab there, but I cut my hand. I caught myself, though, and I got back up, got another little shock somewhere through, and then there's another place I jumped through, and this time I got tagged in the head. And I don't, again, I don't have the pictures to show, but when I got hit in the head, my whole upper body went. (laughs) And I wish I could tell you that somehow I was able to grit down and pull my hands up and catch myself. No, it was mud and my eyes couldn't even close. Boom! (laughs) And I crawled out of there and I couldn't see. I mean, I could not see. So uh, that was pretty intense. Here I am, I'm coming through the finish line, making it, got a couple more pictures. One, you know, with all the crew. And I'll be honest, here we are. This is uh, me and all my first cousins. Mary's first comes, my brother-in-law uh, is in the middle there. He was an intern with us this past summer. But here I am, and honestly, like, you can barely see my eyes, and part of it is because I cannot see. This eye, I could not see. It took about four hours for it to become, like, visible from this eye. Like, I was like, okay, I hope I didn't do anything permanent. But I'm telling you, when I got shocked, and I, you know, oh, I could see the ground getting closer, but I couldn't respond. You know, it's like... Bam! It was awesome, man. It was awesome. We finished, and there we are, me and my girls. Look how pretty they look. And man, that's horrible. I'm like a mess. Took me a while to shower. It was a lot of fun, though. Yeah, yeah, I'm absolutely ready. Yay! Woohoo! Let's do it again. But the point is that we have to run to win. We have to choose the pain of discipline if we're going to receive the prize. Now, the prize for that run was a lot of fun. It wasn't about, you know, yeah, it was 10 miles. Yes, it was elevation. Yes, it was 22 obstacles. Yes, it was challenging. But at the end of the day, it's about us choosing to run to win, that we're choosing the pain of discipline because the prize is in front of us, the prize not only of achieving things on this life, but the prize of eternal life. We have to run our race with the, with the desire to win. And so, I would say this, do now what helps us achieve what we want most. So as we make an application today, maybe you need to take some notes here. I want to help you make an application this morning. So I have two questions for you to consider, okay? Two questions for you to consider. I don't have these on screen, but uh, write them down or jot them down, however, in your memory. The first one is this. What do you want most? 
What do you want most? Every one of us has a different answer, and don't think of something stupid like, I want to win the lottery. Um, you know, nothing like that. Or, you know, I want a different husband. You know, nothing like that. Like, uh, no. Um, you know, what do you want most? What do you want most? Okay? First question, what do you want most? It may be in any arena of your life. Maybe it's a spiritual goal, physical goal, an, uh, uh, an educational goal. I'm not sure what it is, but what do you want most? And the second question is this. What do you need to choose now to achieve what you want most? What do you need to achieve now? Or choose, rather. What do you need to choose now to achieve what you want most? Two questions. What do you want most? And what do you need to choose now to, to choose now to achieve what you want most? If you want to get close to God, for example, if you say the biggest thing that I want in my life is I need to get close to God, maybe you need to choose a reading plan in the YouVersion Bible app. Maybe you need to start a reading plan. You, you, you need to commit to coming to church on Sunday mornings. I'll tell you what, you want to know one of the biggest places you can grow in your life? Serve others. Serious. Get out of your comfort zone and say, you know what, I'm going to serve somebody else. I'm going to give my life for somebody else. I'm going to serve on the dream team somewhere. I'm going to serve in the media team. I'm going to serve on the, on the online team. I'm going to serve in the nursery. We need help in the nursery. Honestly, we need some help there. I'm going to serve in the nursery. I'm going to serve. Right now we have a great thing happening with Sarah's pantry, with the hope room. Uh, I need to serve. Where, where can I serve? I'm telling you, you want to grow. You want to get close to God, serve. I'm telling you, it will change your life. Maybe you need to get connected to a small group. You say, I have this goal, I want to get close to God. Those are some of the things that I would encourage you to do. Because again, what do you want most? If you want to get close to God, you have to ask the second question. What do you need to choose now to achieve what you want most? Those are some ideas. All right, maybe you're saying, you know what? I want to lose 20 pounds. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait till January 1st, though, because you know it's a new year. Like, No, if you want to lose 20 pounds, maybe you need to... Uh, you need to join a gym. Maybe you need to hire a trainer. Maybe for you, you need to get help with a diet. And I'm not talking about like, I mean, diet is way, you know, the way I see food is that I have a seafood diet. If it's there, I eat it, right? Um, yeah, y'all know that one. Like, yeah, that's the way I, but what I have to realize is that for me, food is fuel. Like, and when I wake up and I eat something, I'm thinking to myself, like, what am I going to do today? Am I going to work out today? Because if I'm going to work out, I'm going to ingest a little more carbs. Or if I'm going to work out today, I'm going to make sure I'm going to eat a bigger breakfast. But if I'm not going to eat, eat at, or if I'm not going to work out, I'm going to be lazy all day. I, I kind of just kind of, you know what, I'm going to slow that down just a little bit. I'm going to control that, you know. But here's, you know, for me, I've been on a, almost a four-year health journey. And so four years ago, I weighed 35 pounds heavier. I was, I was out of shape. I couldn't. You know, I couldn't run, I couldn't, I couldn't do a pull-up. I was talking about pull-ups last night, you know, and I couldn't do a pull-up to save my life. You know, I would like, in fact, I would do a chin-up, and even at the chin-up, I would only get like maybe two. It would be like, one, and then it would be like, that was two, that was two, you know what I'm saying? Like, I count that as two, you know, and for me now, you know, I mean, pull-ups aren't a big deal. You know, that's a part of my workout. I'll bust out 10 of those, and it'll be, you know, part of the set, and it'll, you know, that's just normal. But when I first started almost four years ago, I was completely out of shape, completely. So the point is this, though. Like, you can't just say, I want to do this. You need to decide now, what do I need to do? And so lose 20 pounds. Marriage. Let me say, if you're struggling in your marriage, and you say, I want most for my marriage to be successful, you need to get out and date your spouse. Get on a date night. That means no little kids running around, nobody like, mom, can I, mom, can I, no, dad, can I, you know, no, get away from me, you devil child, no, just kidding. Uh -uh. <laughs> you need to get alone with your spouse and you need to go on a date. Well, what do we talk about? I don't know, remember when you first started dating and you couldn't hang up on the phone, you fell asleep on the phone, like, oh, I just, uh, you still there? Yeah, hey, hey, I'm still here. Like, I don't know. Just go have a conversation. Get on a date night. Maybe you need to get some counseling. Maybe you need to get into a small group of believers because I'm telling you, my marriage is strengthened every time I get around my small group because they encourage me and challenge me to be a better person. And let me just say, for some of you, you need to get a date weekend. Um, a date weekend. All right. I'm laughing because y'all need that. You need to like just say, you need to get to the point in your life where uh, you, you say, you know what, I'm going to get away for a weekend. Like, I'm going to overnight. Maybe it's an overnight thing. Okay, I heard a pastor say this. I wasn't going to repeat it, but I'm going to repeat it. My wife's like, oh, God. 
Okay, you need an NIB conference. You're all, wow, what's that? Take your notes. You need, okay, I'm already embarrassed. Okay, you need a naked in bed weekend. You're like, what did he just say? Yeah, that's what I just said, and all the men said. Okay, they're not afraid either. Okay, good. So the point is this. You need to make the most of your marriage. Stop putting it on the, you know, the back burner and when and if and I don't know. I, I Stop. And then you say, look, my marriage is not good because you haven't taken care of it. So what do you need to do now in order to achieve what you want most? If you want to be, from, be free from addiction, you have to admit it. You have to ask for help. You need some counseling. You need a support group. If you want to be free... And all of a sudden, when we think addiction, we think, oh, heroin. Ah, you know what? There's a lot of addictions beyond these extreme drug addictions. If you're facing addiction in your life, you need some support. We need help when it comes to that. Debt, you can't just look at debt and say, all right, you know what? Uh, debt, go away. Poof. It's not going to happen, right? It's just not going to happen. What you need to do is you need to realize that you got to make some choices with your money. you got to stop spending as much. you gotta, you got to learn how to live in a budget, so on and so forth. And let me just say this, hard work. It's hard work, all of it. But as we prepare to close today, it's hard work, but you have to choose your pain. You have to choose your pain. Choose your pain. You can choose the pain of discipline now or the pain of regret later. But it's your choice. So what do you want most? When I was training for the Tough Mudder, let me just say, I, I would tell myself often when I was on a workout or I was on a run, I'd say, Paul, you need to choose this pain now so you, do, you don't experience pain on the course. And I kept telling myself that. In the middle of a long run, five-mile run, you know, I'm thinking to myself, all right, choose this pain so you don't have to feel the pain of the course. When I did a longer run, you know, uh, you know, a little over nine miles, I'm to tell myself, choose pain now or you'll experience pain on the course. And I kept telling myself that when I was doing, uh, you know, five round circuit training of, you know, a half mile run and come back and then four different workouts and I was pushing my body to extreme measures, you know, I'm saying, telling myself you can experience pain now or you can experience pain later. It's your choice. And as I'm walking through that, I just realized that that's life. That's life. We can choose pain now. Or we can choose pain later. It's our choice. It's our choice. It's up to us. It's up to you. You can choose pain now. We got a video playing or something in the background. You can choose now the pain. Or later on you'll experience the pain of regret. But, it, but here's the thing. It's up to us. It's our choice. We have to choose it. So a final verse I want to share with you today comes, continues from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, two, two verses here. It says, so I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. I run with purpose. Every day we have to tell ourselves, are you running with pur purpose? Verse 27, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what I should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. I choose to run with purpose. And what I would say to us today is that we need to wake up every day and when we decide to choose discipline over regret, we need to run our race spiritually. We need to run our race physically. We need to run our race financially. We need to run our race in our relationships in such a way that we not only run to win, but we run with purpose in every step. Every step I take is a choice. It's a choice. And I'm choosing today discipline over regret. Part of having purpose in every step is retraining our brains to choose what I want most over what I want now, right? I don't like to work out. I'll be honest with you. I'm not that person. But I've come to develop habits that help me. And I actually enjoy it. When I look at that, you know, here's my thing. I'm not a big sweet tooth. I enjoy sweets. But my thing is menu, though. Come on, somebody. Like, and I'm not satisfied with one bowl of menu, though. I want at least two, if not three. Like, that's me. 
Like, I'll pass on the cupcake. Y'all can have the cupcake, but just give me five bowls of manudo, you know what I'm saying? I'll be all right. Thing is, is that I have to decide, like, what am I choosing? Am I choosing the discipline of my life, or am I going to live in the regrets of my life? And it's not just for a race. It's, I was playing volleyball with my daughter yesterday. And I was thinking to myself, you know, when I'm 60 years old, I want to play volleyball with my kid, grandkids. I don't want to be the papa that's sitting on the couch and I can't do it. I want to be the papa that gets out there and creaky old knees. I want to be Stella. I just thought of it as Stella. I want to be a Stella when we were in Honduras, right? That was awesome. Playing soccer with these kids, man. She was even, you should have seen her. She pushed kids over, just bam. She was like, I want to be that. Choosing discipline over regret. All right. There's times when we feel like we can't do it. The truth is we can't do it alone. That's why we need Christ. So if you lose sight of what you want most in life, I guarantee it will become your greatest regret in life. Your greatest regret. You'll get to the end and you'll say, man, I wish I would have had more time with my kids. Man, I wish I would have taken care of my health. Man, I wish I would have made some better financial decisions so that I can leave my children with something, with a blessing. Discipline over regret. And so discipline starts with daily choosing the pain of discipline over the pain of regret. And so as a takeaway today, it's what our message is entitled. Really, it's choose the pain of discipline over the pain of regret. It's our choice. Every day we can make that choice. So I want to encourage you that whatever you want most in life is worth the pain of discipline. So be disciplined. Be bold. And live the life you've always dreamed of. Live it out every day. Be disciplined, be bold, and live the life that God intended you to live. Would you close your eyes? Father, we thank you for this word. And we ask you, God, that more than words, you would make us better because of it. That we'd leave this place absolutely transformed. I pray this in Jesus' name. Now, with every eye closed, I'll tell you that living a disciplined life with no regret starts in a relationship with Christ. If you're going to live a life where you say, you know what, I don't want to live a life of regrets. I want to get to the end of my life and I want to live my life to the fullest. It's going to happen with a personal connection with Christ. That's the start. That's the start. And he'll lead you and he'll guide you. And, I'm, and just like Paul, when he said, I want to do what's right, but I don't, and I struggle and I, ah. we need Christ. Thank God, because Christ alone will give us the strength to live how we desire to live. And so, if you're here today and you say, I've never committed my life to Christ, if you're here today and you say, you know what, I've never surrendered my life to Christ, if you're watching online and you say, that's me, I want to give you the opportunity to do that today. And so if you're here in this place, would you simply raise your hand? If you say, that's me, I want to commit my life to Christ today. If there's anybody here or if there's anybody online, we'd love to know. Say, that's me, I'm willing and ready to commit my life to Christ. I don't see anybody raising their hand today. But if you are, I want to encourage you. Today, make this day the first day of the beginning of, your, of the rest of your life. No more regrets. See, that's me. That's me. That's me. In fact, God sees your hand. God sees your hands. If you're raising your hand, just... If, Put it up and then go ahead and put it right back down if there's anybody else here today. God sees your hand. I'm going to ask you just to repeat this simple prayer with me. Everyone in this place, would you say, Jesus, today, I choose life. I choose discipline over regret. I choose you. Would you save me? Would you help me? And from this day forward, may I live to honor you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Can we just thank God for those that are responding today?